Hello, I'm Francis Seeley from Global Net 21, and we set up some time ago to discuss some of the big issues of the 21st century. One of those issues is clearly how open government is, how transparent it is, and how it engages its communities and its citizens. Well, we decided to explore this a little further, and we organised a meeting with the Open Government Partnership, and with them and the people who joined us, we engaged in a discussion about this and how we can make government more open and more transparent. Uh, the meeting tonight is about open government and uh, transparency and what the priority should be for reforms over the next uh, five years and to the next parliament. I think we have a lot of ar archaic stru structures um, which still need to be sort of broken down. And there's a big part of, sort of culture, so there's been a sort of big resistance from the <laughs> that started off as being, say, you know, we've got the claims of being the mother of all democracies. Um, yet we haven't really evolved, and that's why I think where we why we have problems. At this meeting, Tim Hughes from the organisation involved joined us, as did Emily Randall from Unlock Democracy. And at the beginning of the meeting, Tim told us what the Open Government Partnership is, and Emily told us about her work in Unlock Democracy. Uh, the Open Government Partnership is an international initiative set up uh, about three years ago now, originally by eight countries. And the idea behind this is to give reformers inside governments and outside governments um, the, the space and the platform on which to develop reforms. So it's now grown to 65 governments around the world and each one of those governments every two years has to develop an action plan with national civil society and then is held to account for whether it's met those uh, commitments and reforms. Unlock Democracy is a campaigning organisation for democratic reform, uh, which covers everything from voting reform to lobbying transparency. Um, my role there is the senior campaigner, so that means I can be crafting emails trying to get people to do stuff, or pestering politicians trying to get them to do stuff. So, a lot of pestering in the name of reform. Like um, open data, that where government proactively publishes information and data that any citizen uh, can access, and if they have the right skills and expertise um, to be able to uh, to use that data and to, to potentially hold government to account or to, to, build, to build new ways of analysing that data so that others can use. Um, then there's the, the second area of transparency which is kind of reactive transparency. Uh, so that's things like the Freedom of Information Act. So uh, the rights for citizens and civil society and anybody in society to be able to ask for a piece of information from government and unless there's a good reason government can't give it to you, and those are set out in the Act, then it has to produce that information in a timely fashion. The big issue that we have when we're looking at sort of transparency about the format, about how is that data, data available? Do you, need, do you need to go and study the, you know, go and go a degree to be able to... You can kind of almost feel like that when you're looking at the Parliament site or you know, the Electoral Commission site. These are two core sites that you're meant to be able to go to and get information. You should be able to, in theory, go to the Electoral Commission and quite easily be able to find out who's donated to who, who the, um, or go to the government, be able to see who's been in what administrative meetings. After Tim and Emily opened the meeting, then the people there got together in a number of working groups, and in those groups they were able to discuss in a more intimate way how government should be more open and how it should be more transparent and how best to achieve this. So this is basically around um, a constitutional convention which enables people, um, basically the public, to actually drive policy. So the idea is the sort of five big areas. A, that it's something that should engage people across the England, Northern Ireland, and Wales, something that's people-led, um, and how to sort of structure that enables the convention and participants to be randomly selected by the population to represent I suppose the views of the populace and mm -hmm. the outcome I am looking for. Then you work back from that to whether the technology is in any way delivering. <laughs> but it seems that we're just left with this reaction to what gets dropped in that. I do want to defend the right for individual bits of the system, whether they're in government, outsourced, charities, whatever they are, so they have their own way of doing whatever they do. The problem is the lesson isn't learned. It's actually perpetuated down the line. Part, but there is a transparency, people don't see 
see these things, the lessons are not learnt. We almost need uh, what didn't go right sort of yeah. going on. Yeah, but it's, but it's, very, it's very difficult because um, it's often very big companies who are doing these contracts. They're often not even UK owned. And for instance, American companies not going to show you every single last bit of how they make their profit and where their profit is. After the groups had met and reported back, there was then a general discussion. And then we looked at various aspects of open and, and transparent government and how we can work together better in the future. At the end, Tim told us exactly why he felt open government was important. Oh, well, open government, um, it certainly isn't a silver bullet to, um, to unlock uh, every policy issue, but it helps with a lot. Uh, it can help to ensure that government is much more responsive and accountable to citizens, helps to ensure that the, the right people are making decisions in the right way and aren't kind of overly influenced by particular groups, but that those who, um, who have something to contribute to policy making can contribute. Uh, so it can really help to, to deal with lots of the issues that we're facing today as a society.